How's it going, Chip Tribe? It's me, Chips, here with another new episode of the Chip Tide Show. And lately, I've been thinking about something. In the first episode, I talked about how I was the king of motion controls. And while I still stand by that, it struck me that I haven't actually played any games with motion controls on here since. So, today, it is time to defend my throne as we take a look at the granddaddy of motion controls, we sports. So without further ado, let's do it. Now, I usually like to start these off with a bit of background information for those not familiar with the game. But today, I feel like that's not necessary. Everybody and their grandmas knows what Wii Sports is, and I mean that quite literally. According to this page on Wikipedia that may or may not be reliable, I have no idea, Wii Sports is the fourth best selling game of all time. Now, this is probably because it came bundled with the Wii, but that's not to discount this game's quality. Wii Sports may be the first game for the console, but it is still also probably among the best. But maybe it's been some time since the last time you played, so allow me to jog your memory for a moment here. Wii Sports is by no means a complicated game. It's pretty much exactly what it says on the box. There are five different sports to play, all of which utilize motion controls. It is the epitome of simple, but classic. And it's probably in large part what made the game so popular. Whether you played video games or not, it's so easy to figure out how to play and appeal to pretty much every age group. The simplicity of the controls and concept also makes it timeless in a way. And uh, even now, whenever I have friends over, we somehow always end up playing Wii Sports. But you may be asking yourself, if it's a launch title, how good can it really be? And to that I say, it's pretty good, haven't you been listening? As I said before, this game is incredibly simple. You and up to three friends can go head to head in five different sports, armed only with your wits and more importantly, your arms. And on second thought, you don't really need your wits for most of them, it's pretty straightforward. Wii Sports doesn't really have any original characters to play as. Instead, you get to play as all of the strange and messed up me's that you made on your Wii, which is pretty funny. I personally like to use a wiser elder here, but Steven Jerk is also a classic, and who could forget, um, uh, well, this guy. Also, before we get into the different sports, I just thought I'd mention the music here because while the soundtrack is pretty limited, it is also pretty tight and meme-worthy, so bonus points there. But with that, let's take a look at the first sport here. Tennis. I feel like this one is the most famous of the five. Maybe it's because it's just the first one on the list, or because it's probably the one that best emulates the real sport. I honestly don't have that much to say about this one. It's tennis, and it plays just like tennis. You gotta swing the remote to hit the ball, hope the opponent doesn't hit it back. There's no fancy power-ups, no super moves, just good old fashioned tennis. And they even keep the nonsensical scoring system. I mean, it starts off okay, each point is worth 15 points, but then sometimes it's just 10, and then don't even get me started on the whole deuces thing, and, you know, love is zero, and pff, I don't even know. I'll just have to accept the fact that I'll never be able to fathom the complexity of real tennis. But the game version, now that I get. A lot of people will say you can just win the game easily by rapidly swinging the Wii remote around, but unfortunately I got some bad news for you. While this idea seems good in theory, it doesn't work as well as people would have you believe. It does, in fact, matter which way you hit the ball, either forehand or backhand. So, in practice, this strategy only works about half the time. And besides, actually playing the game is a lot more fun. Moving on to the next game on the list, we've got America's favorite pastime, baseball. Now, while tennis is probably the sport closest to the real thing, baseball is the furthest. You're either pitching or hitting, but no fielding. There's only three innings in a game, keeping them short and sweet. But while this game is basically just a super simplified version of the real thing, that doesn't make it any less fun. In fact, the standoff between pitcher and batter is probably the most intense thing in the game. 
The pitcher has a few different pitches they can throw, and they can vary the speed by, well, varying the speed. It's their job to fake out the batter, leading to a game of chicken that'll have you sweating no matter which side you're on. You always have to be one step ahead of your opponent. If they think you're going to zig, you zag. If they're expecting a curveball, you hit them with a slider. And just when they think they've got you all figured out, you hit them with the old slow fastball and that's the game! Well, it might be the shortest game of the five, it might just be my favorite. Oh, and also this goes for all of them, but playing with another real person is a must. The computers just don't do it justice. Unfortunately, the only other person I have to play with is my assistant Richard, so I guess I'll have to do. Not much of a challenge, though. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can read you like a book, Richard. What do you think of this? Oh, oh, you hit a home run. Shoot. Next up is the other most famous one, bowling. And again, I don't have a whole lot to say about this one. Yeah, it's bowling, it's fun. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. There is one thing about this game that's important. It's the reason every Wiimote has a wrist strap because people got a little too enthusiastic and hurled them right into the TV. So uh, yeah, uh, don't do that. I'm actually pretty good at this one, which is weird because I'm usually real bad at real bowling. Once you get into a groove and figure out what works for you, you can get high scores pretty consistently. For me, I always seem to accidentally curve my ball to the left no matter how hard I try not to. So I just move to the right a little bit and voila! Oh, and uh, before we go on to the next one, of course, we gotta do this. There you go, all's right in the world. The penultimate game is also probably the most in-depth one, golf. Now, I won't pretend to know much about real golf, but from what I understand, yeah, it was basically just golf. You got a couple of different clubs to use, and there are 18 holes, you gotta hit the ball right into the hole at the end, and there is no normal clapping allowed. But then, the Mies don't really have hands, just floating balls, so I guess that's not really an issue for them. If anything, I'd say this version is probably more fun than the real thing, just for the simple fact that you don't have to go hunting for your ball every single time. But now that I mention it, how the heck are the Mies getting around these courses? The early ones start off simple enough, but some of these ones at the end, I mean, yeesh! They're literally islands in the middle of the ocean with no other land in sight, sheer cliffs on all sides, and a constant 30 mile an hour wind blowing across them. I mean, making an interesting course is one thing, but man, this just seems like a little much if you ask me. But back to the gameplay, and yeah, plays just like you expect. A little map in the corner to help you gauge where you're hitting and a bar on the side to let you know how hard you gotta hit it. Now you can take a couple of practice swings before committing, but I wouldn't bother because you're probably just gonna end up doing what I always do and get the perfect swing five times in a row while practicing, then completely beef it on the real one. If you hit it too hard, the ball will fly away of course, so sorry, but no happy Gilmore in here. Eh, or you could, it's still pretty fun. You could try to do a proper swing with good form and follow through and everything, but honestly, I find it a lot easier to just give it a nice strong flick instead. For the most part, the game works pretty well, except when you're right next to the hole, oddly enough, because it can be really hard to get the game to sense just the light tap and you end up just hitting it way farther than you meant to. But other than that, I have no complaints. What I can say is, I hate golf, but this version is actually pretty fun. And now for the last game on the list, and that's boxing. This is the only game that utilizes the nunchuck, which is pretty cool, but it's also the only game I had trouble controlling. But then it's probably because all my nunchucks are terrible and barely work, so make of that what you will. Now, unlike tennis, where you actually have to be careful with your swings, just rapidly and randomly shaking your remotes around works pretty well in this one. The only problem is that it's actually, oh, it's actually, actually pretty tiring. I, uh, oh, I gotta lie down. Oh. Richard, play me some Eye of the Tiger, I gotta get back into this! Oh, oh yeah, 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 you right, you right, you right, copyright, well, uh... Oh, I guess the Wii Sports theme will just have to do. Whew, okay, okay, I'm good. So, that was Wii Sports. Ah, nope! Nah, nah, we're not done just yet. Richard, quit packing up, you can't go home yet! 
We may have played all five sports, but that is not all this game has to offer. If you take a gander at the bottom right side of the screen, you'll see two little icons down here. And those, my friends, are training mode and Wii Fitness mode. Now, let's start with this little blue weight here, training mode. I know what you're thinking. Training mode? I don't even know how to play these games. Sounds boring. And yeah, yeah, based on the name, I would have to agree with you, except for two words. Or one word? I'm not really sure, but mini games. Who the hell doesn't love some good old mini games? There are three different ones for each sport, making for an extra 15 games to play. Some of them are pretty short, but others are so long and in depth that I'm not even sure you can call them mini games. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but I will go through some of the highlights. There's a hit the target mode for golf that is basically just boils down to regular old golf and I'm not sure why I like it so much but eh, what can I say it's fun there's a home run derby mode for baseball that's pretty fun too the pitcher throws a nice slow straight pitch for you every time and you just gotta try to smash it out of the park and it's super satisfying but not quite as satisfying as 99 pin bowling it's just like a normal game of bowling except they are rails so you don't have to worry about gutter balls unless you're really bad I guess and you start off with 10 pins, but each frame keeps increasing until you're taking out an entire pin army. This game is also home to an easter egg where if you manage to roll the ball all the way along the guardrail, you get an instant strike. It's super hard to pull off, but when I first heard about this as a kid, it blew my mind. There are plenty of other fun little games, but for now, let's move on to the final mode in the game, Wii Fitness. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I completely forgot about this mode when I started to write this. And, to be honest, there's a reason for it. You basically just play a series of tests based on the five different sports, and it gives you a little score. It's fun, I guess, but it doesn't really measure up to the other modes, so maybe just give it a pass. And there you have it. That was Wii Sports. It may be over a decade old. But it still holds up and I find myself going back to it with friends to this day. And, of course, who could forget how it paved the way for motion controlled games in the future. Man, when you put it that way, I really owe this game a lot. Huh. I, I, mean, I feel like something weird usually happens at this point in the episode. No one? No, no interruptions or not anything? Richard? Richard, you got something to say? Nope. Alright, well, in that case, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the Chip Tide Show. As always, let me know what you thought in the comments below, and consider subscribing and hitting the little bell icon to get notified when the next episode is up. You can also follow me on Twitter, at the Chip Tide to stay up to date on everything. I will see you next time with another brand new episode of the Chip Tide Show. But until then, don't forget to take it easy.